XC bikes have come a long way over the years from back in the day, aluminium or steel even 26 inch wheel bikes to these absolute race weapons used nowadays. Having said that, the price has come a long way too, upwards of 10,000 pounds. Oh, oh my God. But is it necessary? Has it created some kind of false image in cross country where people seem to think that they need some kind of absolutely carbon fiber race weapon, all singing, all dancing bike to be able to one, do it and be competitive. Well, today we're going to take a look by comparing an absolute super bike to its more budget counterpart. Stay tuned. To begin with then, let's take a look at the bikes. Now in the budget corner is this, the Orbea Honor 10. Now this is an 1100 pounds aluminum XC bike and is actually the most expensive in the Honor lineup, which consists of five bikes. The cheapest being just 629 pounds, making it a truly affordable XC option. On the superbike end of the scale is this, my Orbea Alma M team at six and a half thousand pounds. It truly is an all singing, all dancing superbike. So let's take a little look at the bikes in more detail. What are the kind of materials and parts we can expect on our budget bikes then? Well, this thing is an all aluminium XC bike. So everything from the main frame, the wheels, bar stem, seat posts, and even cranks are all aluminium. It's an easy material to source and it's an easy one to manufacture with. Having said that though, there are nods to more expensive design processes out there. So things like internal cable routing and stealth routing to take a dropper post as well. However, said that, there are old school styles on this as well. Things like quick release front and back is something you don't see on bikes of a certain price. Not a terrible thing, it's just something that you'll notice as you creep up the price brackets will be quickly eliminated. Parts wise, well, this thing has got some pretty cool bits and pieces on it. So Shimano hydraulic brakes, also a Shimano one by 11 group set on the back. So you have got a big old wide range of gears back there perfect for those ups and those downs. A fairly basic RockShox suspension fork is out front. Having said that, it still does have a lockout on it, which is great for when you are mashing those miles. The weight of this bike is around 12 and a half kilograms. Whilst not making this an absolute featherweight, I really do believe a bike like this or similar is a solid little package when it comes to beginning your foray into the world of cross country. Speaking of lightweight packages though, have a look at this then. We touched on it, we had a quick look. This is it, my Orbea Alma M team. And it is an absolute featherweight with a carbon fiber OMX frame of theirs weighing just 830 grams. Boom again. This bike is an absolute race thoroughbred and has even got pedigree on World Cup podiums taking wins even. The parts list and the materials used on this bike is literally a dream build of who's who and what's what. So if it's not carbon, it's titanium basically. Aluminium is rarely seen throughout this bike. So we can look at things like ultra lightweight Vittoria race casing tires to save weight in a 2.35. So very wide still, but still very light. Carbon frame, like I said, we have carbon cranks, carbon bars, carbon wheels, carbon brake levers, you name it, where stiffness can be had and weight can be saved, a super bike will do it. It's even got things like the new Fox Transfer SL lightweight dropper post. I mean, that's only a 75 mil drop, but it just slams that seat out the way and makes descending easier. Things like that are something you're not gonna find on a budget bike. The reason then carbon fiber and titanium is used throughout, well, mainly carbon fiber, is because it's weight to stiffness ratio. So you get a very stiff, very powerful, direct ride out of the bike, whilst incredibly low weights. This bike is nearly sub 10 kilograms. Lighter weight does come a heavier price. You can have almost, what, five, six of those honors for the same price as one of these. Now, that's not to make a direct comparison between the two because they are two very, very different bikes. But what 
about geometry? What about comparing the two when it comes to the numbers? Well, let's take a little look at that. What is the angle of the dangle then when it comes to these two bikes? What are the geometry differences between the vastly different price range bikes? Well, let's put it this way. It's actually pretty tight. So the head angle on the two different bikes is a 68.5 on the Alma and a 68 on the Honor. When it comes to the seat tube angle, well, they're both bang on at 74.5 degrees each. The reach is where we do start to see a bit of a difference. So the reach on the Honor is a 440, while it does get stretched out on the Almera, a 448. I should both say these are in size larges as well. So they are the right size for me, who is six foot. Now wheelbase, there's virtually nothing in it. So the Alma, oh, this side, sorry, it comes in at 1144. What's well, actually the Honor is an ever so slightly two mil longer at an 1146. So the numbers, although very similar, do show a slightly different intent for each bike. This Alma being slightly longer, slightly uh, steeper, just shows its true race intentions, its aggressive nature. Whereas the ever so slightly shorter top tube sitting you slightly more upright and the slightly, ever so slightly slacker head angle just making it a little bit more compliant and forgiving, showing that those sort of beginner tendencies for it are really there. But speaking of the trail, Let's head on out there. We're out on the trail then, and I have chosen the Superbike to ride first. Now we're gonna take it for a bit of a spin and I'm gonna report back to you guys and girls out there to sort of give you a well-rounded overview, if you like, on what a bike like this is actually like to have, own, ride and use, be it at a race or day to day. So we'll look at what it's like to climb, descend, is it enjoyable, the components on it, and then you guys can make a nice informed decision all by yourself. Okay, that is the climbing done, and this bike is a dream to ride uphill. I don't mind smashing the odd uphill anyway, but on something as nippy and responsive and lightweight, like a super bike like this, it really does make mince me of going up. But what goes up has got to go down. So with that, let's see if it fares as well, pointing the other way. we go then. The downhill portion of that stunning little XC loop done as well. It was a great fun loop and riding the superbike was great fun on it as well. But let's sort of summarise a little bit about this bike then. Not this one in particular, but a superbike in general, obviously. On the way down, it is a lively ride, but the parts on it really help for this as well. So you've got good, powerful brakes, nice grippy tires, good and tacky, and the ability to unlock and lock the suspension as well. And what made a huge difference was of course the dropper. Getting that down out the way really did help when it got a bit steeper. Having said that, it's now time to put the budget bike through the same paces and see how that fares. Right, time for the bike then that's on the complete opposite other end of the scale then. How will it go uphill? How will it go downhill? Everything in between. Well, sit back, relax and hold on tight because we are going to compare them and see which one maybe comes out on top. Maybe there isn't a winner at all. Who knows, but I'm out of here. Doodles to the trails. Come on, Leo. Once again, the uphill has been crushed. The trails have been owned. Actually a really fun little hardtail this, living up to what could be a very good re reputation that it's building. However, is it gonna be a bruiser on the downhills? What's it gonna be like compared to our superbike going back down with definitely some different com components? I think this is gonna be sort of the part of the track which really is gonna sort of accentuate the differences between the two. But on that note, as always, 
glasses on, it's time to get going. See you in a moment. Right, here's the inadequacies of the fork. Really shining because they ain't absorbing much. Woo. Right, that was a wild ride. Downhill completed it on the budget bike and it definitely drew out some of the inadequacies, sadly, of the more budget bike. But I think we should go find somewhere a little quieter, tucked out the way and go through things before we hang up our boots for this vid. So, to the woods. Whilst comparing these bikes then might be similar to comparing apples to oranges, both round, both very similar to look at, at their core, they are still very different bikes. Now, if you are looking to get into racing, you want to just try it for the first time, you're dipping your toe in, if you like. The budget hardtail cannot be beaten. It is great. It will do everything the super bike will do. It just might not do it quite as well, but it is a sixth of the price almost in this case. If you're that experienced XC racer looking to gain those extra watts or extra miles an hour average quicker, the Superbike's the one for you. It just does what it is supposed to do. Fast, efficient, and effective. Very good. But to be honest, both bikes are great. And both types of bikes are perfect for the types of people that they are aimed for. But anyway, we're done. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Are you an XC Whippet riding a Superbike or are you of the budget bike persuasion? I like to hear from everybody. But thank you very much for watching, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Until next time, I'll see you later.